Today on the Grill Top Experience, I'm going to introduce you to a new member of the family, and that is the Weber Q1000. I picked it up on a local classified ad for a really good deal. It was a lot cheaper than it would be to buy it brand new at the store. So I'm going to walk you through the process of cleaning it up and making sure that it's safe. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the lid by removing the cotter pin. This is going to make it a lot easier to access the insides and clean the lid. Next, use a wire brush to remove any burned on food off the cooking grates. If they still aren't clean, soak it in a tub with a degreaser like Simple Green and scrub it with a scouring sponge. Now you always want to check the condition of the grates when purchasing a used grill because they're one of the more expensive parts and it's good to know the true cost before you buy it. The next step is to clean out the inside of the cook box. First, remove the burner using a flathead screwdriver or an 11 millimeter socket. Once it's been removed, shine a flashlight down the burner tube and make sure that it's clear. Now, a lot of spiders and other bugs like to hide in there and that'll limit the heat output of the burners. You also wanna make sure that the screen at the beginning of the burner tube is clean so you get the proper air fuel mixture. Finally, check the burner holes and knock out any burned on bits with a paper clip or a push pin. With the side burner out of the way, it's time to scrape out any food and grease in a disposable drip tray or somewhere you don't really care about getting dirty. Now I'm using a plastic scraper to avoid scratching. Normally after I scrape out the cook box, that's where I would end, but since this grill's been sitting for a while and I'm not really sure how long, I'm going to make sure I clean it out with a good degreaser and I'll show you how to do that. Spray the inside of the cook box with some degreaser and let it sit for a couple minutes to help break up the grease. Then scrape it out with either a scrub brush or a scratch free sponge. Next clean the bottom of the outside of the grill to remove any spilled food on grease using the similar method. You can use the same process to clean the lid and the rest of the outside to make it good as new. Finally, rinse both the inside and the outside with water to remove any residue and then prop it up so that way it gets nice and dry so you don't worry about rust. Once you have everything dried out, it's time to put it all back together. Next, put the burner tube back in, being sure that you get it in the right place. Then put the bolt and tighten it down with an 11 millimeter socket being sure to get it just a little bit past finger tight. It doesn't need to be really tight or you risk stripping it out. Replace the disposable drip tray. I got this one off of Amazon and I have a link in the description, but you can find it at most stores locally. Then put the grill grates back on, put the cotter pin back onto the lid, and you've got everything back and assembled. It's a good idea to check for leaks by spraying soapy water on the connections of the propane tank. If you get big bubbles, you know that you've got a leak and you need to fix it. Then the only thing left to do is to fire it up and see how hot you can get it. I got this one at over 500 degrees and I'm pretty happy with that. And so with just a little bit of work, you can keep your grill lasting for a good long time. Now I saved this one from the landfill because I got it from a classified ad. I encourage you guys to do the same thing and you might be able to save some coin in the process. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos about grilling, smoking, and cooking with fire, go ahead and hit subscribe because there's more videos to come.